Well, I continue to have a recurring dream. And in this recurring dream, I'm in my Honda Pilot, which I no longer have, by the way, so this dream better stop. <laughs> but in the Pilot, I'm attempting to park, and I can't get the Honda to stop rolling down the hill. And I can, I, and I press on the brakes so hard that sometimes I get cramps in my leg in the middle of my sleep. And I'm pressing and pressing and, and trying to get it in a park, and no matter what I do, it continues to just creep along slowly, 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 until I'm getting ready to smack into something. Um, and, and it's a very scary and annoying dream that recurs over and over and over again. <coughs> now I pray and hope that since we've sold this pilot that that dream stops. Because it's really almost like a nightmare. Uh, but anyway, it's not unusual to have uh, recurring dreams, correct? <coughs> Many of you do. And if you do have recurring dreams, psychologists say that you have issues. <laughs> I explained the other day. I explained it. Specifically, there's a Dr. Carr. I was reading her article in Psychology Today. And according to Dr. Carr, specifically, it means you have unresolved issues. And so I was trying to think about all of my unresolved issues. And uh, one of my biggest unresolved issues has to do with I, I, I don't listen to Pastor Melissa. And I was like, I just got to start listening to her. Uh, she's always right. And I've been seeking counsel from Richard, my friend, and Richard's always saying, just listen to her. She's always right. And so that's something I'm going to work on for this year. But I don't think that has anything to do with this recurring dream. I think this recurring dream for me is probably something about slowing down. And so I'm going to practice slowing down this year. I'm going to begin right now. I'm going to make this about a 55-minute sermon. <laughs> Just kind of stretch it out as far as I can go. Well, Joseph, in our story here, in our Christmas story, Joseph is going to have a recurring dream. He's going to have four dreams specifically in our Christmas story. Four times, at least, that the scriptures tell us about, he's going to lay down at night, and he's going to be in such a deep and peaceful sleep that he's going to enter the dream state. And it's through these dreams that an angel of the Lord is going to visit him. And if we can remember back, and if you need to read it for homework, go back in Matthew and and a few paragraphs before the reading today. The first dream he has is when he has already resolved to divorce Mary quietly, to dismiss her quietly when he finds out she's pregnant. And it's not his biological kid. And so he's in such a deep sleep because he's okay with that. He's resolved to do that. But the angel appears to him in this dream and uh, he changes course. The angel basically says, this is not resolved. Or you have resolved wrongly. And so Joseph changes direction. And he stays with Mary. And then he goes on, he has uh, yet another dream, and another dream, and then a fourth dream. Well, today's dream is very important. Because of what is... Uh, as we heard in the children's message, uh, the fake king is very unsettled by the news that the newborn king, Jesus, has been born. And the Magi have even come to town, these wise men, looking for this baby Jesus, this new king. And so because Herod feels threatened, um, he's trying to trick people into, hey, you know, Bring me this Jesus baby. Let me know where Jesus is, this baby. And so through a series of events, um, and the Magi are wise to Herod, and, and so they, they just leave and, and, and go on about their business. 
Um, and then Joseph has another dream. And it's in this dream he's visited by the angel again. Now here's what's interesting. Joseph is our only character in this Christmas narrative. Even backing up before the Christmas narrative when we had a visit by an angel to Zechariah. He's the only one to be visited more than once. Zechariah had one visit. Mary had one visit. The shepherds had one visit. Joseph has four. Four visits. And it makes you ponder and wonder, you know, what, you know, why? And so I was just thinking about some reasons why. Well, maybe the angel. Well, first of all, angels aren't omnipresent. Angels just aren't everywhere, all the time, every place, at once. We know from scriptures from different places, you know, in the old Daniel for one, we know that these, we know from Jacob's ladder, from the Old Testament story, that these angels, they travel from heaven to earth. And so, maybe it's not easy for them to get from one place to another. I mean, that's another discussion. And so, you know, taking that into consideration, maybe the angel says, I want to get this job done as quickly as possible and get back up to heaven as fast as I can. And I know if I go to Zechariah and deliver my message, first of all, he's going to argue with me. I'm going to have to punish him. Second of all, he's going to break in the song. And I don't have time for a song. If I go to Mary, same thing. First of all, she's going to get, ask a question. But I'm going to have to have a rule book because her question seems to be different than Zechariah's question. And I'm going to have to figure out who do I punish and who do I not punish. And she's going to break into song. And I don't have time for all these songs. If I go to the shepherds and revisit them with a new message, then the heavenly chorus is going to come with me. And we're going to have another song. I don't have time for all this singing. No offense, Peg. <laughs> Music. Music gets in the way, right? No offense, Scotty. Make sure Scotty's paying attention. So anyway, he goes to Joseph. The angels are sent to Joseph again. Another reason why is Joseph, um, as we talked about last time we talked about Joseph, he never speaks, yet he's obedient. The scripture says he's righteous, and he always does what the angel of the Lord says to do immediately. And so on this message, on this message from the angel, from the Lord, the angel says, hey, and then you have a new baby, you know, it's your first one. You're probably trying to figure things out. Who's going to get up and change the diapers? I told Melissa, yeah, this is our seventh kid coming. I got this great idea I thought she was going to be very excited about. I said, you know what? It just hit me that you getting up in the middle of the night, feeding and changing, that's, that probably wears you out. I said, so I think on this seventh one, I'll set my alarm and I'll get up at like 3 a.m. and I'll take care of the baby. And I thought that was going to be, Richard, I needed your counsel. I thought this was going to be received very well like she was going to pat me on the back. Well, she all basically almost punched me in the face. <laughs> Your pastor did. And uh, so I'm still not exactly sure why it wasn't received well. But Mary and Joseph are probably having the same arguments about who does what, where, when, how, and what time, and how many times. And Mary's keeping track of how many diapers Joseph changes. And so that's the stage they're in. And so now, maybe, maybe by this time, they are starting to get some support. And they have, maybe family has arrived and, and is helping out. Maybe casseroles from the church and all that good stuff. Uh, gift certificates from Walmart. You get the point. So now they're kind of settling in. And now this angel appears to Joseph in a dream. And says, guess what, Joseph? The fake king is after the real king. So you have to pack up and you have to go to Egypt. And again... Joseph hears this message, receives it, never speaks a word about it. And the scripture says immediately he gathers up Mary and the baby and they get their stuff together. They get on the donkey and they head to Egypt. That's extreme obedience. And now the story is still not resolved. Because they get to Egypt, 
time goes on and he's going to have yet another dream. While the story is still revolving and being resolved, he's going to be visited again. And it says, okay, king, the fake king has passed. Now you can go back to Judea. So he doesn't speak back. He immediately gathers up the family and travels back to Judea. While they're traveling, he gets his fourth, fourth visit from an angel in a recurring dream and says, whoa, whoa, whoa. Not so fast. You can't go there because now there's some fake king family members that are in charge and they're just as bad. And so we need you to go to Nazareth. And so they change course and they go um, to Nazareth. Four times. Four recurring dreams until it's finally resolved. All along the way, Joseph not talking back of being obedient and doing what God has asked him to do. And finally, the story is resolved. And they're where they need to be uh, to raise Jesus in his early years. And so with that, as our Christmas story and narrative has come to a resolution, on this December 31st, it gives us an opportunity, A, to be thankful for the story of the real king being born, our Savior coming to us, coming down to us. It also gives us an opportunity to think about our own resolutions, especially when it comes to faith and how we respond to this Christmas story. And if we can think back to last year, where we're this time, this place, last year when we're thinking about New Year's resolutions and we're making resolutions about our health, we're making resolutions about our family, and we're making resolutions about our faith. And you and I made this. And we said, I resolve to do this. Well, guess what? If we're like most Americans, then 92% of us fail to live out our resolutions. And so we Basically, 8% of the resolutions that we make collectively, we keep. How many of you all resolved to get in better shape? I mean, I'm probably the only one that lived that out and made it, right? <laughs> How many of you resolved to do better at, in your career or in your work? How many resolved to do anything along those lines for the betterment of your life. Well, probably most of us. How many of you resolve to spend more time with your scripture, with your readings? How many resolve to pray more? How many resolve to care for others more than you did this year? How many resolve to give more of your time to your community or to the scouts or to the arts or to your church or whatever the case may be? How many resolve to go on a mission or a service project? And think about, are those left unresolved? And so again, if you're like most of us, we do have parts of our life that are unresolved. Unresolved. <laughs> this year, as we think about our resolutions this going year, forward. This year, I mean it. I mean it. Mean it. Mean it. I could not possibly mean it anymore. I got this. Candy bars, gone. Funyuns, gone. Ice cream, candy bars and Funyuns are gone. This year, I'm going to connect with people, IRL, in real life. I made a list. That means I mean it. I'm going to take care of myself. Right after I figure out who that is, other than a mom, which I love. I beat myself up. I'm never good enough. That has to change. Why do I do that? I'm such an idiot. See? This year I'm going to work on being the cool dad, you know? Maybe go to skate park, hang out with my kids. No baby. That's <laughs> work, right? I kind of want to forgive myself. You know, give myself a break. Not be perfect. I've got it. 
I'm going to step outside of my comfort zone by volunteering at the hospital. Maybe the pet shelter. Because cats, they're so much easier. This year, I'm going to forgive my mom. Now that I am a mom, I totally get it. This show, I'm going to start reading literature. You know, books and such. Because I hear it's good for me. This year, I'm shaving my back hair. <laughs> I am tired of those kids in the neighborhood pool that call me Sasquatch. It's just that I am comfortable staying in my comfort zone. Who am I kidding? God, I wear myself out trying to outdo everyone. I, I can one-up everything, and it's exhausting. I have a lot of baggage, and it is not all from the mall. Well, some of it is. I'm trying, God. I am. But there's a reason why I'd rather stay at home. I'm weak, God. I know it. You know it. And you know what, God? This year, I'm giving you all the places that hurt. I'm going to give you all of my failed attempts that I think are going to make me a better man. You are a strong fortress, God. You. And I'm going to let you be strong in my weakness. All right, God. I'm going to start with the best relationship. You and me. And then... We'll move outward from there. Because this year, I mean it. I mean it. I mean it. I mean it. I think ultimately... So the reason the angel returned to Joseph is because Joseph meant it. He was completely obedient to God. He gave all his important life decisions to God and committed himself and his family to God's will. That's the most important resolution that you and I can make this year is that we can be more fully committed this year than we were last year on a daily basis to God's will. Give your life to God all over again is the most important resolution you and I can make. And if we can do that on an hourly basis, on a daily basis, give our health to God, give our relationship to God, even give our faith to God, that's called grace. Give it all over to God and be committed to that decision on a daily basis through the power of the Holy Spirit. That and only that is the only way that you and I can be um, resolved and be left fulfilled at the end of next year when we're standing here together. Otherwise, you will continue to be unfulfilled, unresolved, and have issues uh, continuously. So that is my prayer for you, and that's my prayer for myself, is that you and I can show the obedience of St. Joseph in terms of giving our life to God and meaning it this year, this day. And so, may God add his blessing uh, to the word today. May God add his blessing to our year to come. And all God's people said, Amen.